the Browning BDA. Let's check it out. Going old school. Browning BDA. Uh, this was produced from 1976 all the way up until 1997. Uh, it was designed by FN and produced by Beretta. Beretta made this very similar to the Cheetah, which is their Model 84 in 380 ACP. Uh, it holds 13 plus 1 in a double stack magazine. It's double single action. has the blowback design, but there's some definite differences between the BDA and the Cheetah. FN produced their model 140 DA, which was in 32 ACP, and the exact same design as the BDA. This is a great little pistol, very light recoil, but yet it's pretty large, and honestly eclipsed because of all the smaller 380 ACPs, especially today. There are so many different choices, and really this is about the same size as a Glock 19. The only law enforcement agency that ever adopted the Browning BDA was the Belgian police, and it was for their female officers. I had a good friend of mine that had one of these years ago. I love shooting it. So I got on Gun Broker. I found one, which they can be pretty expensive because they are collectible. But I ended up getting a really good deal on this one, and it is a beautiful pistol. Now making purchases from firearms uh, can be expensive and we really appreciate our patron members on Patreon. They really help us to bring guns to you that we could not possibly get any other way. So just a big thanks to my Patreon members. Now when it comes to Browning, there are a lot of choices. Uh, shotguns, rifles, the Browning high power, a number of different firearms that Browning has made over the years. Uh, and this is almost a little bit obscure. Uh, the Browning BDA and it's a double single action pistol. It's in 380 ACP, but it has some beautiful looks to it. I mean, that steel slide with that bluing, it's just gorgeous. Uh, then we have the aluminum alloy frame, which kind of lightens the weight, beautiful walnut grips. But let's go ahead and check to make sure the gun's unloaded. We're gonna drop our 13 plus one magazine, uh, which is pretty big for the time. In fact, the Browning High Power was 13 rounds originally. We'll check the chamber and the gun is empty. Uh, now we have a magazine disconnect, which I'm not a big fan of, but that's one of the things that Browning typically puts, even on their high powers. But we do have a decocker, so we can bring our hammer down and then lift it back up, uh, and then it puts it in the fire position. Uh, the magazines, while original Browning magazines can be a little difficult to find, uh, they are available through Metgar, which I highly recommend Metgar. They make magazines for a lot of the different gun companies. A nice little base plate on here. But one of the big things about this pistol in particular is that it is in 380 ACP and smaller than the current 9mm that were being made during this time. So it was somewhat of a concealable pistol. And yet, you know, we had 380 ACP, which would give you a little more self defense capability. Now, again, the Browning BDA was made by Beretta. And here we have a Model 84. This is the Cheetah. It's in 380 ACP as well. Uh, we have a 13 round magazine, and the chamber's empty. Uh, one of the big things, of course, you see there, it doesn't have the magazine disconnect, which I really like. Uh, but one of the big differences between these two pistols is the slide. And the Beretta 84, you can see it has that open slide design, same as the Model 92 or the M9 Beretta. And this has an enclosed slide. Now, Beretta did not offer the Browning in their lineup. Only the uh, Beretta Model 84, 81 is also another one. Uh, there were a number of pistols that are very similar to this. 
But one of the things that you'll notice is that the frames of both of these pistols are really close in design. Uh, I mean, everything as far as the shape, the finishes, uh, they're both double single action. Uh, even the trigger guards are shaped pretty close. But you'll notice there are some differences. The Beretta has a little more coming out at the front of the trigger guard. Uh, it slopes a little more, whereas the BDA kind of comes a little bit sharper here. Uh, but overall, it's a really close fit. Uh, but another big difference between the two is that we have a decocker on the slide with the BDA. With the Model 84, we have a standard frame safety. So bring it up, and you know it just engages, and it is ambidextrous. We have just standard fixed sights, and then we have a milled-in front sight, which, again, is the same for the Beretta. A little bit different styling, but pretty close. Uh, also, we have a Tang hammer on the Browning, and we have a kind of a rounded-off hammer on the Model 84. Both have somewhat of a little beaver tail right here as well. Uh, one of the things, though, to note about these two pistols, and we're going to drop the magazines of each one. Uh, the Browning magazine has a lot of bluing on it. Uh, the Beretta is more of a matte finish, but it may just be for this particular model. You can take your Beretta Model 84 mags, and they'll fit in your Browning and vice versa. And so if you're looking for magazines, you know, this is one thing to note is that if you have these two pistols, these magazines will interchange. Of course, this one does come with the carbonate type grips, uh, but you can get the wood grips as well. In fact, I believe this one actually came with wood grips and I switched it out with the, uh, the more polymer plastic type grips. It has a little more texturing to it and a little thinner. And that's one of the things about the BDA with these wood grips. They are fairly thick in width. And so when you're grabbing this pistol, you've got a handful. I mean, it belies the size of this pistol. So it gives you a really good grip on the pistol. And even though there's no texturing on these grips, there is some tackiness. And so it just gives you a little bit of gripping. Now, I would imagine if you have really large, meaty hands, you may get some slide bite, uh, which was also typical for the Browning High Power. And so that is one thing to consider if you're looking for one of these uh, and you have larger hands. Now we have our serrations that are actually in front of the decocker, but you can actually use the decocker to bring that back. But it is a really smooth action on this pistol. Uh, the bluing is beautiful. And guys, when you get into some of this really high quality, a lot of machining, a lot of fitting with these double single actions, uh, they can run pretty expensive. And so in a world of you know polymer frame striker fire pistols, they're inexpensive to produce. And so it's one of the reasons why, you know, the prices are so much lower for typically your polymer striker fire pistols. Now the grips, I'm sure you can get different style grips if you want, but that mirrored finish on that bluing is just beautiful. And it's not even matte on the top like a lot of them have done. I mean, it just has that gorgeous look to it. Uh, this also comes in a nickel finish as well. The barrel is 3.8 inches in length. Uh, the overall is seven inches, and then we have five inches high, and then it's about an inch and a quarter when it comes to the thickness. And again, a lot of that has to do with the grip. And guys, even though this is in 380 ACP, which is still considered the minimal effective round for self-defense by most experts, uh, you're getting 13 plus one and that gives you a lot of capability. Uh, for a number of years, you had a lot of single stack 380 ACPs, you know, with six or seven to eight plus one. Uh, this was a high capacity magazine. Now, again, the Cheetah will also achieve that same mag capacity, uh, but that was one of the big things about these pistols that the appeal was so great, is that it did have a higher mag capacity than a lot of the pistols during its time. And with 380, there's a ton of different self-defense options out there. And, and so, really, you can carry this with confidence. One of the things about this pistol, too, is it's great for those who are recoil sensitive. Uh, it's light on recoil. It's fairly small compared to most 9mm out on the market. Uh, but when you get into those Micro 9s with the double stack magazines now, they get considerably smaller. And so, really, I mean, this is somewhat outdated. But one of the big appeals to it is that it's just that old school kind of quality to it. But as far as carrying this for self-defense, I mean, that is all about your preference. Uh, and two, this would make an excellent self-defense pistol. Uh, for me, you know, I would carry this at times just for fun. <laughs> I carry a lot of different firearms. And sometimes it's just nice to have something different with some real cool styling to it. 
But that's just me. Some guys want to go strictly utilitarian, and believe me, I understand that as well. Now this is 380 ACP. Here is your 9mm. Uh, in Europe, 380 ACP is considered 9mm Kurtz, or short. Uh, it's a 95 grain bullet. Uh, it's going 960 feet per second. Uh, with the 9mm, we're going 115 grain and then 1200 feet per second. Now those are just standard target loads, but it gives you an idea of the difference. You've got a heavier bullet going faster, and it's just going to give you better performance. Recoil is more excessive than it is with the 380. And so really, for those who want to carry 380, it's faster follow-up shots. If you're concerned about recoil, uh, definitely one of those options. But then again, 9mm is the self-defense caliber of choice for the majority of people. And obviously, there's a ton of different self-defense options for both of these and different bullet weights. I guess when it comes to a double single action pistol, there are some advantages, there are some disadvantages. Uh, first off, and I'm going to just show you how this works. Um, load up your rounds into your magazine, put it into the grip, rack your slide, and then it's ready to fire. Uh, at this point, you can pull the trigger, it's going to fire. Uh, but we're going to drop the decocker. Uh, now, you can have a round in that chamber, drop the decocker, and this is a very safe way to carry it. Uh, or you can lift up your safety, still a very safe way to carry it. Uh, because the trigger itself has a long trigger pull. And so once you pull it back, you can see the hammer coming back. And that's one of the things about double action, is it manipulates the hammer. Now, once a round has been fired, and the gun is in fully cocked position, uh, every subsequent shot is going to have a shorter, lighter trigger pull. Uh, one thing that people end up doing with these type pistols is the first round, they're pulling all the way back, they fire. That second round comes really fast because they're just not really expecting it. And so that is one of the dangers. Uh, but that trigger pull on here is super smooth. We're going to look at that in just a second in a little more detail. But you can see it brings the hammer back. And then again, the slide will come into the rear position put the hammer in the rear position, and you're ready to fire. Now, let's say you fire off about three or four rounds, and you want to stop. Hit the decocker. It brings the hammer down. Now, there's a block in there. It's not going to fire the pistol. And now you're in total safe mode. Bring the safety off. Again, you're still in safe mode. But you're ready to fire. Keeping this in a holster, if you ever find yourself needing the pistol, you can pull it right out, and it's ready to go. One of the dangers, though, and it's just like this with the Beretta 92, is that a lot of people will drop that decocker and they'll carry it this way. Then when they pull it out, they're like, nothing's happening. So it's really important to bring that safety back up. Mag release pops those mags out really well. Uh, it's not beveled, but the magazine is beveled somewhat. It does come together at a point. So it makes it fairly easy to reload. The slide stop right here. And of course, it comes back, it locks into place. You can drop it. Uh, and then, of course, you have your takedown lever, and we'll look at that when we break it down. Uh, it does have a little bit of a trigger stop on the back, and this is going to just aid in better trigger pull. The front of the pistol has been shaved down, and so it's going to make it a little easier to slide into holsters. Gives you just a little bit more coming in, um, and a really nice design overall. Now, the trigger pull action, uh, it's some take up right here, and this is in double action. And then it starts to build, but it's super smooth and consistent all the way through. Reset. Right there. So it's got a really quick reset. Now you'll notice when I bring the hammer back, it brings the trigger into the rear position. Here we have a little bit of take up. And then stacks just a touch and then a nice break. Trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge from Brown Ales. This is in double action. Eight pounds, 11.2 ounces. And it's about that. It's a very heavy trigger pull, but that's designed to be that way. Now, when we bring the hammer back into the single action position, four pounds, 4.5 ounces. So it's much lighter and actually easier to control. And one of the things about the Beretta is that I can cock the hammer, engage my safety, and I can actually carry cocked and locked. With the Browning BDA, you can't do that. I mean, you can bring it back, but now you're in single action. This is very dangerous to carry this way. So again, 
drop your hammer, disengage your safety, and now you're ready to fire. And when it comes to weight, one pound, 6.2 ounces. Again, guys, there are so many different smaller choices. I mean, the Ruger LCP Max is about half this size, and it still has 10 plus one, and you can get magazines with 12 plus one. So again, it's just a matter of choice. Now we want to thank Fiocchi for sponsoring the ammo, all made in the USA, one of the largest suppliers of ammunition in the country. And we also want to thank Lula Loaders. The Mag Lula is the bomb when it comes to the range. Guys, there's a lot of choices out there and, you know, really with polymer striker fire pistols, they're very efficient, they're effective. Uh, and there's a lot of reasons why we have gone to that. It's, it's a great evolution to be able to put on your hip and to carry something super lightweight and yet very effective. Uh, but one of the things about these older firearms is there is a lot of craftsmanship that goes in it, that beautiful blue finish, the walnut grips. Uh, there's something about taking this out to the range that's very appealing and honestly, you know, you want to carry something like this on your hip. Uh, but, you know, the recoil on this is so mild and it's such a joy to shoot. Uh, the double single action is so smooth. It's very pointable and the grip is full in your hand. But it definitely has some limitations uh, considering a lot of the modern pistols that are out there. But it doesn't have as much soul as something of this kind of quality. Uh, and so I really enjoy taking firearms like this out to the range. And honestly, I end up carrying them at times. Uh, you know, but again, I end up going back to those polymer striker fire pistols because they're just so easy to carry. Uh, but there's something about having something like this on your hip that's very pleasing. Uh, you know, with the 13 plus one, 380 ACP, gives you some capacity. And yet, if you're recoil sensitive, this makes a great option. Uh, and so, you know, 380 ACP is a good ballistic caliber. No, it's not quite up to 9mm 40, 10mm 45, but it still has its place. And honestly, if you're that recoil sensitive, it's better off to have something that you really have some confidence in and you feel like you can control than to have something that when you pull that trigger, you kind of, you know, flinch. The 380 ACP is still a very viable option in today's market. And when you get into these older designs, they're still beautiful firearms that can be effectively carried. Now when it comes to disassembly, we're going to drop our magazine, check the chamber, of course, uh, now, this is a fairly simple process. Uh, one of the things about this particular BDA is it's a little bit tight coming on and off. So you engage your slide stop, you push this small button right here. And this actually pushes this button out and allows you to bring your takedown lever around. Uh, now typically, you can release your slide stop and this will just come right off. But one thing I found with this one is I have to actually pull that to get it off. Actually putting it back on, I have to do the same. Now with the Beretta, I'm going to show you that just because it's really simple. Uh, drop it. It's the same exact type mechanism. You just got to make sure you get that little button pushed. Drop our slide. It comes right off. Then when you put your slide right back on, it just slides over. Go into slide lock. Then again, push in that little lever and it releases your slide stop. And then you can bring it back. Now we're going to remove our recoil spring and guide rod and then pull your barrel out. This is a blowback design. A lot of times these are attached to the frame. And so this is just a better design uh, and it's easier to manipulate. But really that's all you need to do to field strip. Of course you can see the internals. I mean there is quite a bit going on in here. A little bit of wear right here on the slide rails or actually right before it. And I think that may have something to do with this slide having a little harder time coming off, something with the barrel lockup. Then for reassembly, just drop in your barrel in reverse order, your recoil spring and guide rod. Then we're going to bring it back over our slide. We're probably going to have to give it a little bit of a push. Engage your slide stop. Hit this little lever or little button and then pop it back and you're good to go. 
But guys, it is really simple and your BDA should go on just fine, more like the Beretta. So again, guys, as far as price goes, you can look at upper 600s up to 1,000 plus. And if you get lucky, sometimes you can find a really nice BDA for a little bit less. And so uh, it's just one of those things looking around. You may find one in a local gun shop. Again, they haven't made these since 1997. So what's out there is out there. Uh, as far as pros and cons, uh, pros is just a beautiful firearm altogether. Made by Beretta, so it's really good quality. Offered by Browning. So, you know, it's just got two names behind it. Um, the double action, single action trigger pull is excellent. Beautiful wood grips, beautiful bluing. It is a larger pistol. Uh, for 380 ACP, and that's probably one of the biggest cons. I mean, 13 plus 1 is nice, but you can get pretty close to that at, again, about half that size. Uh, this is more of a I want to than I have to. <laughs> the new Ruger LCP Max, I mean, again, 12 plus 1 and just a super small gun, but it's a super small gun, and so some people like to have a little more in their grip. Uh, but then again, it just may be something that you inherited from your father grandfather it's just something that means something uh, it's definitely a beautiful handgun that can be used for self-defense so you know it's again up to what you're looking for up to your budget and you could be like me you just want something really nice and you have other guns that you're carrying you just want to add this to your collection and too when it comes to 380 caliber i mean that's a plus for those who are recoil sensitive uh, it's a minus for those who want to take advantage of all the ballistic capability they can. And definitely 9mm is more of the standard, uh, but 380 ACP is still considered an adequate self-defense round. And again, guys, we really appreciate our Patreon members um, for you know allowing us to purchase different firearms like this to bring to you guys. We do a lot of behind the scenes. We do a lot of videos that we can't show here on YouTube. So if you want to support us on Patreon, we'll have a link down below. So guys, just thought I'd bring you along with something that uh, I've been wanting for a while. It's a classic, it's a beautiful firearm, and if you're looking for something that's in 380 ACP, that's light on the recoil and yet has a high capacity, and is absolutely beautiful, uh, the Browning BDA is a classic. Whether you get the Browning or the Beretta Cheetah Model 84, that's also a beautiful gun. Yes, there are a lot of better options out there, but there's none that look so good. Rubber Dummies is one of the best training tools on the market, and you get a 10% discount using Suit00 when you click the link down in the description. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. You'd really like to have a little extra. Oops. Well, for crying out loud. For crying out loud! Drops the lever back free, and then you can drop your pistol. Your slide. Your pistol. That's one of the things about a lot of these online sort. I don't want to say all that. I'm going to get popped. Uh, this is real close. The Browning BDA. The slide will come to the rear. Oh my gosh.